Welcome again to a new program in our series, The Verdict of Science Creation. Guess who's our guest today? Mr. John Mackay again. Good day, good day. When I say again, it's just my joy to say again, and I hope it's going to be long again, again, and again. Good day, good day, and good day. Um, is that a very much good day or a lot of good That's day? That's Australian. Oh, really? Actually, it's English, but it's short for God's day, but people don't want to remember that. So, Mr. John Mackay, uh, Creation Research International Director, so good to have you with us today. Mr. Mackay, I have a straightforward question for you, okay? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There is a certain European country, and uh, I don't want to mention which one, but maybe I'm wrong, but I, I'm sure there is one, um, somewhere around Spain it should be, <clears throat> at least. Uh, and I heard not long ago that uh, there is a strong political movement to confer persons or personal rights to primates, get the monkeys. Well, it's true, and, and, and the reality is you're going to see more and more of this through Europe as people abandon a firm belief in creation and swap over to actually thinking through evolution because if Romulus Campan is no more than a monkey's uncle, then why not give your monkey the rights of the uncle? So that's the logic. Um, you see, it's not enough if you want to be consistently evolutionist, just say people are different. Because in reality, the papers have been pressing this year, we're only 1% to 2% different from monkeys, so they should be entitled to 98% of human rights. So are you prepared to pay taxes to give monkeys pensions? Well, um, yes, no problem. <laughs> as, as much as it would happen to see monkeys working in a factory. Ah, uh, so if and they yeah. don't work, they don't entitle yeah, no, to it. I'm, right. I'm sorry, there's somewhere in the Bible, am I right, it's like if you don't work, don't eat, so sort of uh, probably a monkey should be convinced. But you see, your biblical reference there is based on creation. Exactly, and, and so for humans. since it's the creator's right to rule the planet, he's got a rule about working. Yeah. But that's only because man is made in his image and monkeys aren't. So there's no such rule for monkeys. But you see, what we're talking about here is the influence of an anti-creation, anti-Christian doctrine, which is going to rob the people of that country of good money that could be used for helping poor people yeah. and give them to monkeys who have no benefit at all. I mean, have you been to hear the first symphonic op opera uh, by the monkeys? No, not yet. Right. I mean, there was a singing group called the Monkeys in the USA, but they were actually made of people, <laughs> right? And uh, the, 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 you don't ever go and hear poetry recited by monkeys. There's never a building erected by monkeys. So there is a very distinct difference, but the evolutionist is trying to plaster over that difference and just pretend man is just one more of the animals. Romulus campaign, you earn money, share it with the... With the, with the dogs and the cats and all of that. Isn't it this some sort of uh, attempt to bring evolution actually up on a level of a law? Because you see, up to now we have, we discussed in a previous program, where we do encourage you to, when you watch this program, to make sure you get a copy of the previous programs which would really help you to understand what is going on and help you for the future programs. We, we've been talking in a program on uh, uh, theory, uh, the theory of evolution, of uh, what is a theory. Uh, it turned out that it, it should be a testable hypothesis. It, it turned out that you cannot test evolution, so we just throw it out on the window and we said that that's not even a theory, it's just a guess of someone, uh, we know who he is, and so on. But up to now, although we have biologists and scientists claiming that evolution is a fact, no one saw it, but they say it is a fact. Um, now they want, we talked on Darwin's doctrine. Yeah, they want it applied yeah. as if it is a fact. In fact, when I was in England recently, one of the leading educators said, not only don't we want anything to do with creation in the science classroom, yeah evolution must no longer be taught as a hypothesis or a theory, it must be taught as a fact. Now the minute you have the history of the world taught as the fact of evolution, then you will see these stupid laws being proposed about giving monkeys and apes and gorillas and orangutans and all their hairy cousins, right, the rights of people. In fact, we saw a good example of this in a zoo um, here in Europe just a little while ago where for the first time a lion which had attacked a keeper and killed the keeper was actually 
not put to death. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, traditionally, if yeah. an animal attacked a person, yeah. it was put to death. Well, this lion, the, the judge's ruling was it's the keeper's fault because the lion was only doing what came naturally. Now, you're a theologian. You know your biblical account. In Genesis, when God created, what is described as natural food for the lions? Vegetables. Vegetables. Yep. So you see, therefore, when you follow through Genesis, which is creation-based, you get up to Genesis chapter 9, and God tells Noah the rules about the animals. Yep. Number one, from now on, he's allowed to eat them. Yep. Number two, the animals will be afraid of man yep. because now that man's a sinner, we're so stupid, we'd probably eat them all. Yep. Number three, <laughs> you will discover that we're allowed to kill the animals for food, but they're not allowed to kill us. And any animal, God says to Noah, that attacks a person is to be put to death. Why? Because man is made in the, the image, image of, of God. God. That's a creation-based rule. And that's been what's governed behavior in Europe. So that if you had a postman who was delivering the mail and the pit bull leaped over the fence and savaged the postman, to, you know, you, you didn't put the postman down, you killed the pit bull. Now it's being turned on its head. So you're discovering for the first time the legal system, the leaders in the legal ruling um, department are making rules based on evolution. And this is just one more example. If apes and orangutans and gorillas, baboons, chimpanzees, all of those creatures are really just one or two percent slightly different from human beings, then we must give them human rights. So. I guess they'll get to vote on whether your program is successful. Do you think any of the monkeys are watching today? Unbelievable. Even Spanish monkeys? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's, my, I am sort of scared a bit of, of the consequences of such actually lifting evolution on a legal um, compulsory level. It's exactly as you said. Uh, that law would force people to consider against like I hope many or most Christians would consider uh, to uh, uh, think of a, or uh, approach a monkey as he would do with the person, not doing that would bring you against the law. It so would. You would break the law because I'm sure there would be a lawyer out there who would advertise. Yeah, of course. As a, he's an advocate for monkey rights. And yeah. He will set up a, 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 a situation where you would be sued either for ignoring the monkeys or for abusing the monkeys because you kicked one out of the road or you slipped on its banana peel or whatever, right? And the reality is you'll soon get to the situation. I mean, you know the biblical statement, there's nothing new under the sun. Yeah. Now, have you ever been to India? No. Have you know, well, you, if you read about India where they don't eat cows and yeah, they yeah, treat animals yeah, yeah. As, 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 as spirits, etc. The reality is there's nothing new under the sun. So we soon get to the stage where if monkeys have got 98% human rights, then what about mosquitoes? I mean, we're just another example of animals. And, and if you can't hit a monkey, then guess what you might not be able to hit in 10 years' time? A mosquito. Now and we last, have to share our house with the cockroaches. You have to share your house with the cockroaches. That's where it ultimately gets. In fact, we've seen it happen before. Just go to places like India where you'll see this sort of evolutionary religion applied in practice. Hunger is not the problem in India. The yes. wrong religion is yes, because they think that cow is great Uncle Frederick recycled 13 <laughs> times, you know. <laughs> so they can't eat the cow and you can't hit the mosquito in case it's Aunt Frida. Right? Um, <laughs> you, you really have to take this sort of thing seriously and stand up now and say, enough is enough. That is evolutionary rubbish. It's not fact. It's not theory. It's not hypothesis. One of my yeah. students said to me, it's not even a good low hypothesis. <laughs> right? So the reality is it's nonsense and it must be exposed as that now before it gets into the legal system as law and then we'll really be in trouble. You know what's my big trouble? I could tell we've you seen, many things. To we've, like seen, we've seen several times little laws like this one, approaches, okay, getting into legal systems and becoming laws of the land. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know what would be interesting one day? To see a church that would still probably calls itself a church with uh, a member bringing a monkey to, in the service. And what would happen a couple of years after we will see some churches with monkeys at the pulpit? 
I thought you already had some of those. <laughs> well, we, some of those just preach like a monkey and preach rubbish. The reality is, yes, what, what you're making is a valid point. But at the moment and forevermore, no monkey is going to ever set up the first Baptist church of monkey land, right? You're not going to have the first reformed church of the gorillas. This is not going to happen. You're not going to have, um, you know, Handel's choruses sung by the, the orangutan band. It's not going to happen. Well, we have special services for, for animals in some ah, churches. we already do. Oh, right? oh you see? Yes. Wait, some, well, some churches got even closer to that now. In, in some countries, there's laws at approaching giving personal rights to monkeys. Others already have animals in their services. Well, just, ah, yes. in just the animals places. in those churches are not actually, they're there to be blessed, right? So it's, okay. it's not actually in the same direction. So oh. don't be too harsh. No, me. I'm not. <laughs> oh. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Mackay. Um, that wasn't the last question that I have. Uh, I have a newspaper with me. Um, we have Twins in a Million. It says, they're identical, but one's black and the other white. Now, I want your answer to this. Okay, perhaps you better show all Precious the viewers people. so they can see it. You're seeing? And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a an beautiful interesting tint. case because you and I live in a world in which those who are arguing for monkey rights and ape rights, yeah. etc., are basing it on evolution. Part of the theory of evolution says... We went black because we went to Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, we started out as orangutans, crawled out of trees, etc. Mm -hmm. And we were black because it was so hot. Yep. And then when your ancestors came to Europe, it was cold. Yep. And obviously, a black man in the white snow is food for a hungry bear <laughs> because he can't <laughs> hide. So only the white ones were left. So you have evolution of skin color depending on the environment. Yep. Now, this is a brilliant case. In fact, hold it up to the cameras yep. again, because these again. are not just twins. They're identical twins, yeah. right? Born on the same day, just over a year back from now. And the reality is they were both born white, blue-eyed, and blonde. And within a short period of time, the one you can see on the right-hand side went black. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, stop and think this through, Romulus. You can see on my hand, yes. freckles, right? Yeah. Okay, some are black. Some are brown, some are tan, some are white, and some are pink. Now, the reality is I am the United Nations on one arm. Do you think I should get represent every nation on the planet? But it's true. And the young ladies you saw in that picture did not evolve blackness because it was hot. I mean, they were both born in the same labor ward. They weren't born white because mum was eating an ice block and it was cold. They, uh, they, they weren't born black. We know that no matter how hot the day was. But what simply happened is after a short period of time, the hormone switch in one of them has switched in this direction. And the other one has stayed where it was. And all that hormone does is govern where the pigment in your body rises to in your skin. So that in my skin here, the pigment is melanin. If my hormone switches to that direction, then the pigment will rise to the surface and you will see the melanin, which is a brownish black pigment, and that's what you'll see on the surface. If the, pigment, if the hormone switches in the middle, then the pigment goes right through the cell and you will see brown. If the hormone switches near the off position, then you will see white because all the pigment is at the bottom. In fact, you can think of it this way. Let's imagine you become a millionaire. Is that hard to imagine? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't lust after, don't covet, don't be greedy. But the reality is, <laughs> let's imagine you're setting up your new Ferrari factory, right? And you want to paint this car. Okay. Well, you just don't paint it with ordinary paint because it's made of metal, so you have to have metal yep. rust preventer yep. in the paint. You have to have a nice shellac uh, shiny substance, and you have to have the color. Yep. Okay, but you have a control switch. Yep. And the control switch, if it goes this way, lets in more gloss. Yep. If it goes this way, it lets in more of the red color. Okay. And if it's in the middle, it lets the right amount of rust preventer into the paint mix. Okay. okay, but you've set this up and then you go away. Now you've done this to your computer. Have you noticed that the longer your computer runs, the more inaccurate it gets, right? Yes, it begins yes, to fail, yeah, right? You've yeah. noticed that. So you set this on automatic and after a little while, the switch begins to accidentally degenerate away from its position. Yeah. 
Now, all of a sudden, you're getting almost no rust preventer in it, no shellac, and all the red colour. Yeah. Well, so you have one car come out the end that's unbelievably ugly red, and it starts to rust the first day. Now, on the next day, you set it automatically, and it accidentally gets kicked by an employee, so it goes back over here. Almost no red, but only gloss. And so this car is brilliantly shiny, and it still begins to rust the first day. And then you have a good day, and the switch stays in the middle, and everything is just right. Yeah. But you see, if you examined each of those cars, they've all got some of the red, they've all got some of the rust preventer, they've all got some of the shiny gloss. It's just a question of how much. Now, the reality is the same for people. It's not that a black person is any different colour from a white person. In this case, it's even simpler. The black is at the top, the black is at the bottom, or the black is all through. So those kids are a brilliant example of, number one, the argument that man has evolved is just rubbish. Yeah. We did not go black because we went to Africa. We went black because, well, you're the theologian. Isn't there a story about the Tower of Babel? What's it, it say? Well, uh, that the Lord uh, commanded people to um, replenish the earth and to uh, do... Okay, whereabouts in your Bible would you find that? Uh, in uh, Genesis, uh, which chapter? Chapter 11. Yep, exactly. Okay, yep. chapter 11. Yep. Okay, now what did they build? Uh, a tower. Okay. They stayed in one place, this is what I wanted to yep. say. They stayed in one place and they built a tower. Now, yep. question, what's religious about building a tower? Uh, well, in building a tower is nothing religious but the purpose in, in ah, so their this. purpose yeah. was religious because yeah. they were told to spread out and fill the earth yeah. and they refused yeah and they so, wanted to go to climb up to heaven yeah so here you have a story about people building a tower and god gets angry and he gives them different what different languages different languages yeah. no mention of different colors at all so the reality is now you have mankind split up by language now say something to me in hungarian mit mondjak magyarul that is the strangest thing I've ever heard, right? I just asked, what should I say in Hungarian? Oh, very good. <laughs> now, you see, my English ears hear the sounds, but I can't make any sense of them. So God's here. I can switch to Romanian if you want. Yeah, well, I can make more sense of that because it's Latin-based than I did Latin at school, right? So the reality is, what you'll find is languages are very effective dividers. And the Bible said God gave us the basic languages at Babel to divide us, but there's no reference to colors. Okay, go back beforehand. Who was the person who just got off the big floating zoo who was told to multiply and fill the earth? Noah. Noah. Okay, what were the name of his sons? Ham, yeah. Shem, and Japheth. Okay, and Ham is Hebrew for dark, yeah. and Shem is Hebrew for nothing to do with Hebrew color whatsoever. Yeah. And Japheth is Hebrew for fair. Yeah. So what you're looking at in your biblical account is a description of going from Adam through to Noah, that switch has started to break. Remember the word we used in a previous program, devolution? Yep. That we started out perfect and things have gone downhill. Now when God cursed this earth as a penalty for man's sin, everything began to go downhill. This was going to be a planet where we would never live forever, nor even want to live forever, because things are devolving, degenerating. So from Adam's perfect rosy brown color, and I mean you being the Hebrew speaker, Adam, what, what color has Adam got in it? Reddish. Yeah, reddish. The DM part yep. implies red. And so Adam is not white and he's not black. He's some sort of rosy brown like you would love to be on the beaches of Florida in summertime, right? If you could ever afford to go there. Yes, that's right. After you make your Ferrari factory, <laughs> you can do that. Right. Now, the reality is by the time you get to Noah, the controls are breaking down. Shem, his name has nothing to do with color. That's because in Noah's eyes, he was normal. He was the yeah. same as me. Yeah. But Japheth, he was definitely fair. And Ham was definitely dark. Switch this way, too much pigment to the surface. Switch that way, pigment sinks down. So now you get within one or two centuries, the families are separated. Okay, now I said families because God invented the family. He would, didn't want to break up what he invented. We invented the human estate that was Babel, right? 
And so God broke up the state, kept us in family. So if your dad was black and now you spoke something like Hungarian and these other people spoke something like English, I mean, well, they're human beings, but you wouldn't want your daughter to marry one, right? <laughs> they speak gibberish over there. Now, the reality is from then on, you'll be separated by culture. Yeah. And it's culture which has kept these, yeah. these skin colors separate. Nothing to do with environment, nothing to do with evolution. But guess what? You know that black girl you'll see there? Yeah. Every now and then in Australia, where we have native people, oh, by the way, the native people are Aborigines and they use one of these. No, we had not ah. talked before about weapons. I'm just having this one. Oh, no, this is a very user-friendly weapon. You can't <laughs> throw it away. It keeps yeah. coming back. <laughs> All right. Now, the reality is, every now and then the black ones will give birth to a white child, and you see it happening all over again. And it's got nothing to do with evolution. The kid wasn't white because it was cold in the hospital. <laughs> it had nothing to do with that. It's simply that control switch, and it breaks. And sometimes, in people like me, it breaks differently in each of the cells. Yeah, this is consequential breaking. Yes, yes. it really is. Wow. I'm a degenerate mutant, probably <sighs> slightly more than you are. I, <laughs> OK, that's get to the next point um, uh, you know what i remember um, watching these otherwise sometimes brilliant movies on crime scene investigation um, here's a corpse just with uh, the skeleton left behind okay and they can tell you out of the shape of bones that this was a white person or this was not a white person. Or Let's a see. lady yeah. or a man oh, yeah. or so, a teenager yeah. or an adult. Yeah. Yeah. But now, out of, out of, I just want to say I heard that uh, like different uh, skin color people have different shapes of the hips and some of the bones. Like, uh, and this is why uh, some people like, let's say, uh, the black people, they have a special... Um, um, that it's much easier for them to do body movement because uh, this is at least what I was told that they have uh, the design of the skeleton is a bit different of, of let's say of those of the white ones and this is why they can well, move before easily. you before you go too far in that yeah. direction remember the point we're making about skin color yeah. it's more or less of yeah. the same thing and this turns out to be true in every case okay the skeleton is more or less of exactly the same features. Yeah, but uh, so if you if you've lived in yeah. say Alaska, yeah. right now the people who arrived first in Alaska would have been every possible combination okay. because they got off Noah's Ark and they moved north, right, uh, or moved sorry east through Asia mm -hmm. up across the um, Bering Strait, which yeah. was dry then, down through North America, etc. Now let's imagine every possible combination was there, and it gets cold. Yeah. Okay, tell me what happens to tall, thin people once it gets cold, as opposed to short, fat people. Which one is going to get coldest first? Well, they're the thin ones. The thin ones, yeah. right? I mean, I've seen a brilliant example of this. I took a group of Africans out on a field trip in Canada, okay. as well as some Europeans. Now, the Africans were tall and thin, right? And, and the Europeans were much shorter and often victims of McDonald's and things like that, right? So they were a little more stubby. But by about midday, the temperature dropped to zero degrees. It started to snow. By one o'clock, it was minus two. By two o'clock, it was, well, you know, minus four. Now, the Europeans just kept on going. And one by one, the tall, thin Africans just stopped. <laughs> they really did. <laughs> and I wished I'd had a film because it really was a good example of the fact that they were losing heat much faster than the short, stubby, afflicted ones, right, with too much fat by comparison. Yeah, yeah. But I'm sure if we were on the plains of Africa, where the tall, thin ones were there and the short, fat ones, and we let a lion loose, the short, fat ones would be eaten first because the tall, thin ones have had a lot of practice running and away. probably because we are tastier. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, don't, I can't doubt. You'd have to ask the lion about that. <laughs> but in reality, this is natural selection. But did you notice what it did? 
it eliminated the tall, thin ones in Alaska and eliminated the short, fat yeah. ones in Africa. Yeah. So really natural selection produces the opposite of evolution, whether it's with skin color or whether it's with, with tall or short fat or skeletons or whatever. But again, the point needs to be made. These are merely plus or minus variations of the same thing, not evolving new things. It's really crucial yeah. people understand yeah. that. Yeah. What, what I wanted to, why I came out with that little uh, detail was uh, <clears throat> your evolutionists claim that humans evolved some from somewhere from Africa. We would say, okay, Africa was, it, it is regularly or normally dwelt mostly by black colored people. And, uh, you know, seeing that they have a, a special shape of their bones, it would be interesting to see how it just turned out that they went to Europe and became white and, uh, you know, their skeletons shaped according to the color of the skin. Uh, isn't it rather this, what I'm talking, that different colored people, like, like the basic groups, have different skeletons maybe sometimes. I mean, they have that in just getting back to Noah's sons. It was always that way. One of their, his son was born yes, this way, the, the other one that way. From Adam, yeah. Yeah. you will discover there is a connection between the color of your yeah. skin and, and the, your and bones. Exactly. This is I mean, when you, when you have a think about that, we now know why Neanderthal man was not yeah, our exactly. ancestor, right? Exactly. Because he was a person who was suffering from a bone yeah. affliction. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was probably dark-skinned and he moved north yeah. to where there was less yeah. heat, there was less yeah. sunlight, and the color of your skin if it's too dark, actually stops you absorbing sunlight, yep. so you can't make vitamin D. Vitamin D governs where your calcium is deposited, hence you end up with a variation in your skeleton. Yep. But what's that around the bottom of your face there? That black stuff? You don't want to speak about the fat. No, no, no. The I don't beard. Want to, I yeah. said the black. <laughs> yeah, no, the beard. The, the beard, yeah. right? Okay, how many black Africans do you know that sport big beards? Oh, almost none. That's right. Almost there. Okay, now here is an interesting dilemma for the evolutionists. You go to Africa and you see hairy, black, monkey-like creatures. Yeah. And you see black people with almost no, no hair. hair on yeah. their bodies whatsoever. Yeah. Okay, now let's, let's test your IQ here. I've got a beard. It used to be much darker. There used to be a lot more hair up the top here, right? But you've got a beard and it's still black. I prophesy it will go grey and maybe all fall out one day. Yeah. <laughs> but the reality is... The white people have the hairiest bodies on the planet. Yes. Okay, but the people who are in Africa are black and they have the least hairy bodies on Indeed. the planet. So you will discover that the theory of evolution actually is contradicted by the groups which have the hairiest bodies. But there's probably a connection, you see. I think there's a little switch in your body that says if your melanin is low, then produce more hair to protect yourself. You see, we spot this in ladies who are pregnant because as soon as they get pregnant, there's little messages sent out through the body, protect the baby, protect the baby. And one switch goes way high and she produces hormones and her white European skin gets darker. Right? Oh, yes, interesting. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, 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 exactly. So there is an inbuilt yeah. mechanism. Yeah. So yeah. it's like the same reason you can mm -hmm. cut the appendix out. You've actually got two other mechanisms to back it up. So when God designed the body, he was really careful. If this goes wrong, that will work. If that goes wrong, there's still a way of keeping you alive. So it's a very cleverly designed, multi-level system. Mr. Mackay, keeping us alive, you just said these words, keeping us alive. Keeping us alive to what? I mean, you, we, we, we see people, they want to keep us alive up to live 99 years, yeah. but keep us alive... We, well, it remember our, our refer reference to the Tower of Babel, yeah. that all the different racial groups yeah. came from there? And when Jesus came to this planet to save mankind, he told his disciples to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all nations for one reason. Every one of us, black or white, is going to end up dead on yes, this planet. This right? is it. We don't die because it's biologically necessary. We die because it's the penalty for sin. And the only purpose... Right, you will discover that you can ever gain which will satisfy you is to be put back in touch with the Creator through His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Precious viewers, uh, as just you've just heard, stay alive is not just to stay alive by healthy food and so on. Uh, just 
for a second, think it through. Um, I just have no idea how old you are, um, but you may be young or old. The big question is, is what is after? And the answer is not anywhere out there, is in there in the book of God, in the Bible, that wants to warn you, wants to tell you that the Lord Jesus Christ came to offer you back that life we've lost in Adam. Sure. The eternal life that it's not with vitamins and so on, although they're good. But the key, the answer is the Lord Jesus Christ and his eternal life um, as a gift. Thank you very much, Mr. Mackay. Thank you very much for the good insights. Hope uh, we meet you for the next programs. Until that, may God bless you.